G'day Australia, it's Tim here from Beefing Up Australia, let's get real. And we're here today talking with Phil. Phil. G'day mate, how are you going? Very good. We're in a little town called Newbridge in central Victoria, not far outside of Bendigo, that last year went through the floods. Now, it's not the first time they've been through the floods, and unfortunately it won't be the last time, but each time it happens, it's more and more devastation and more and more money spent to go out to try to repair the town and the buildings and everything else. So Phil, can you tell us a little bit about your story and how you went with the floods this time? Um, I'm new to the town. I uh, only moved in about uh, two months or so before the flood. Um, so they all said, you know, 2011 flooded, and we won in a 100-year flood, blah, blah, blah. So I moved in, had a heap of furniture under the house. My house is off Queenslander, so the house is upstairs. And uh, when the flood hit, well, it was just amazing the way how quick the water came up and washed everything away. It was just out, out of control. Did you have a boat there? No, nope, I needed one. <laughs> <laughs> so with, with all your stuff that was there, mm -hmm. how much of your belongings did you lose? Look, a fair... How much was salvageable if it was still there? Well, I cleaned a lot of stuff. A lot of people said this side away, but I tend to clean things and do it right. So that was fine. I all my household stuff were upstairs, so they were okay. Um, it was just uh, bookcases and bits uh, you know, and pieces downstairs, all my tools, workshop tools and yep. all that sort of stuff. So I cleaned all them and got it going and that's all good. But I lost all my fences and water tanks, two big concrete water tanks. They well, washed? They washed away in the flood. They washed away, but your furniture and everything else stayed? Well, because underneath the house, it's the water flows in one side. It's got like a lattice. Um, railing up underneath yeah. and it all washed against that and stopped. It doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah, it concrete water tanks to, to yep. fly and away. Full of water, full of water. And yep. this tiny thin lattice work. Tree to pine lattice. Saved all now, your stuff from washing uh, A lot went, but a lot stayed. Maybe you should have put lattice around the water tanks. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> you never know. That's strong stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, it was, um, you see pictures of floods and you go, gee, that's, you know, pretty bad. But when you see how quick that water came up, it's unbelievable. A long time ago, because I'm mid-50s, yep. I lived in a little town called Tungama, not far outside of Yarrawonga. Yep. And I think it was, in the time I was there, we left there when I was nine, and I think the place flooded twice while yep. I was there. And being a nine-year-old, when it comes up around your chest, you think, oh, yeah, the water's deep. Right? And the whole town was flat, but it was all flooded. And you sort of had an inkling when it was coming, you put things up or you think, yeah, lock the doors or keep whatever you can inside yep. and we'll salvage it and we'll dry it out, wash it, you know, reuse it. Yep. Because from back then to now, it's completely different, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep. But if you haven't got the things back then, is what you got now, like um, your flat screen TVs, your up-to-date fridges, washing machines. Yeah, yes, yep. yep. Uh, you, cars and motorbikes things like that you close these days yeah right and how much of that did you have to replace of your own personal belongings well, not too much because my actual house actually didn't flood my house is built 2.2 meters off the ground so under the house the water went one point between 1 1.8 and 1 1.9 meters deep under the house that's my height and your height correct that's how high it went so the actual house was totally dry so it's come all the way from down where the water level is now, yep. over the bridge. Well, I, I live straight over there. Straight over there. Yep. So it covered the bridge. Well, it went to the bottom of the bridge where the concrete beam is at the bottom. That's where the high water was. Wow. So, and it came up. Well, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and I could hear water. I went, what's the tap running? It's just correct. I went, what the hell's that? Got out, looked out the window, and I could see water in my back paddock. So I went out, put a peg in the ground, made a cup of coffee, walked back out, and I was a metre and a half further up the hill. That's how quick the water was coming up. Back in five minutes? That's as long as it took to boil the kettle and make the coffee and walk back down again. Came up a metre and a half. 150 centimetres. Yep. In, say, 10, 15 10, ten, minutes. 10 minutes. Yep. That's fast. So I worked out. I had about an hour and a bit left before I couldn't get me out. So I'm madly not trying to move stuff. So you know, uh, Hour. So with by yourself, how much stuff did you get upstairs? I got a fair bit of stuff. I, you know, tools and bits, some electronic tools and stuff I got up there, but there's a lot you just go, 
don't worry about it. Just move to the next. Keep trying to find, because it was all stacked underneath the house. So you, anyway, that's life. Let's so move when, on. So when you moved here, did yep. you get involved in the, the creative club and things? No, like that? I've never been involved in the club or anything, but um, I'd come to the pub. Yep. And met the guys at the pub and played in the pub. It was Matt and Michelle at the pub. They're the new publicans. They basically moved in the same time as I did. So it was right. really quite good. So, yep. um, and the town's been great. They're welcoming and been, and after the flood, the next, well, as soon as been the water receded, which was about two days later, um, I had a heap of the guys turn up to help clean up. And it was just amazing. Never asked anybody, they just turn up. So, new to a community. Yep. And the community, after a couple of days of everything settled down, yep. you know, came in and said, we don't know you, mate. We're going to give you a hand. I'd met them, but it really didn't know them. Like, as I said, I've been here two or three months, you know, that that was it. And I didn't expect somebody, because I know Danny Melbourne, that would never happen. So what? Okay. So with the community doing that, what yeah. idea did it give you of a small town at Newbridge? I've had the food plant. Fantastic. So yeah. after that, we did my place. Then we went did another guy down the road, Ken. He we did pulled his carpets up and did everything for him. He was an elderly gentleman. And then you know, that's what you do. You just help. Nobody asks. Nobody wants anything for it. It's just you just do it. And you said that in a bigger town, a bigger cities like Melbourne and things like oh, that, no. that never happens. But most people don't even know their neighbours unless they're coming into flogging. Correct. Correct. Most people don't even know their neighbours. When you go down to Melbourne, I'm from Melbourne, but a lot of people don't know their neighbours. No, I lived down there for okay. two years so, and didn't know my so, neighbours at all. Um, you know, it, it's a different world. Different world. Different yeah. type of people. Um, unassuming and just genuine nice people. So the people on the other side of the river, like as we know, Which, I, oh, I yeah. know that the, the water came up level with the, the guttering on the footy club and the churches were devastated and the, and the other people on the other side of the yep. river were devastated and everything else like that. How much support did and help did they get after the water receded from the people on this side? And um, Well, the people that were over the river, there's a Next to the church, and there's an old house there. But they live down in Melbourne. They put it as a holiday house. Oh, well, we tried to get in contact with the footy club, tried to get in contact with them. No response. So we couldn't help. We couldn't get into the house. So nothing done over there. Um, other than that, we, we did everything we could do for people. There's people like the other side, Nathan and Kim. We went down to their place, the carpets out, and it was all flooded. Yep. We pulled the carpets out so the house could go out. So we did that for them. And So it's not one of those communities that we're on this side, you're no, on that no, side. No, no. Definitely not. Well, that's good. Yep. Um, the Rec Reserve, they're the footy club, but all of them are from Bendigo. They're not locals. Yep. Um, but, you know, they get in the help a bit. So, so the, the community here can help you with the clean up the footy club? I think so, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Again, I, I'm, I'm only new, so I sort of felt my way around a little bit. It was a bit of um, uh, shock and awe, really, after the flood. It was a bit, um, a lot to take in. A lot so to take in. So you're going to buy a boat now? Uh, my brother-in-law had messed me when I bought the place and said, I hope you've got a boat. <laughs> yeah, good on you. Anyway. <laughs> a boat or a canoe or a surf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to put a, a ladder on a, one of those moat things, you know. I yeah. I'm going to walk into my house. That's true. In the road. <laughs> but it's, I've seen around a lot of different communities and a lot of different small town things. People, when they hear the word flood, you know, they start building a levee around their house and things like that. And then they stand back and they look at it and go, I don't know. Pretty good job. So where's this flood they were talking about? You know, it might not happen then. Why not happen the following year? It could happen two years down the track. It could happen ten years down the track. Yep. But when it's happening like that and so quick, you don't know. You, you, if we had a, a, a bit of a flood the week before, it came part way up my back, back paddock. So we thought, oh, that's that's what we're getting. That was the flood of the water. Yep. And then it receded back and all good. But but there was a little bit of mismanagement in the water. Vanakuri Water re Reserve um, Reservoir. I've heard that from a different, different lot of people, um, different community. No reservoir should be at 115 percent. What? 115 percent. That's what they've had it full to. That's so. That's, I, 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 I only think 100 percent used to be full, but they had it 115. How can you have 115 percent? 100 is full and over. It goes. No, 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 no. They fill beyond that. 100 percent is X. Depth and they can fill more than that because water is expensive. So we had a drought. So the people that look after the water go, we've got to keep as much as we can in there. 
But then when all the floods came, all the rain, well, that, that water had to go somewhere. So it comes down the river. It can't store in the reservoir. The reservoir is normally the buffer zone. It's supposed, okay? to, be. It's supposed to be the buffer zone. So that controls the water flow. Well, there was mad panic. They let it go at night. That's why it came up so quickly. They let the reservoir go overnight. So that's why the river came up so quick. All right. So if there was, they had to have known there was a problem coming. So how many brains do you think they've got for None. letting it go at night? Well, they let it go at night. Instead, to cover of saying, instead of letting it go in the morning and the daytime and saying to people, look, we're doing this, we don't know what's going to happen. Well, they should have done it a week in advance. Open it up. Because talk to a lot of the older people that they say that the reservoir is never used to be any fuller than 75 to 80%. That's it. Because this allows for the, that flood water. Because we they, do get dumps of water. But they didn't allow for it, did they? No, they don't. They don't anymore. It's all, they're all full. And after the flood, they, they shut it all back at the river, just about stopped because they were filling the reservoirs back up. So, how many brains do you think they got? Uh, not many. Not many? They, well, they, they have got brains, but they don't communicate. Look, they don't communicate. They don't look down the river. The yeah. problems they cause. Yeah. That's the problem. It, 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 and there's no recourse. We can't take any recourse against them. So, we, mismanagement. So, if what we, do you think they can do for to help the communities down the river and everything else? Before yeah. they do these things, well, they need to be. They have to monitor what's going. They have all the weather reports. They know what's going on. It was the, the, the Nina or whatever it was, the weather um, pattern. They knew it was wet. We're not in it. We weren't in a drought. Let it down. That allows for the extra flow. They knew it was coming. They knew it was coming. So they need better communication. Correct. There is no communication. Zero. No. Now I've got probably one of the hardest questions you'll ever be asked in mm -hmm. your lifetime. I know you're only new to this place, mm -hmm. the New Bridge, and the people and everything else, and what you've seen so far. Hardest question probably ever be asked. What does community mean to you? Community. Um, it's being involved. It's being, I am trying to immerse myself into everything. I'm, I'm joining the CFA. I'm, and it's all about what, not what I can get from the community. It's what I can help with the community. So it's not about getting anything. It's about helping other people that, Need help. And it's also like, as you said, you only been here two months before this happened, yep. and a couple of days after it receded, your house got inundated with people yep. that you'd only just met. Yep. And it's like, I don't know, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? It was fantastic. It's like, mate, you've only just moved here, but we know you need trouble. You need, not trouble, you know you need help. So, bang, this is... It, it, even before the flood, um, one of the other guys in town, John, he'd be at my place fixing the, the downpipes of broke it up on it it was you know trying to catch the water yeah and i'll be at work and he'd ring me and go oh, i'm at your house i'm doing this and this and this didn't ask he just did it because that's what people do and then yep. it's just so you just help other people you won't say that in melbourne you won't say that in bendigo you won't say it's that little thing. country town um mentality that's about that family feel it, it does oh yeah for sure yep you know so and that's great it's very welcoming and amazing. Cool, Phil. Thank right. you very much, mate. Thank you. You take it easy. Thank you. And we hope everything else, you know. It'll all good. I'm still upright and breathing, so it's all good. <laughs> Excellent. Beautiful. Cheers. Thanks, Thank mate. you.